Hi everybody, Jaliqua here. Thank you for joining us today. Today what we're going to look at is the importance of your hands and how you should hold your hands when you are A, centering a piece and uh, B, collaring it in and then finally pulling up that piece. It's really important to work out how to hold your hands in this aspect because these are things that you're not used to doing. Uh, working with your hands on the wheel is very different to things that you would normally do. So we're going to break it up. We're going to we're going to I'm going to throw the piece for you and you will see uh, the sequence and we'll distinctly slow it down so that you basically get the steps and these steps I'm sure are going to help your throwing and help your understanding of how to throw. The idea is eventually we want you to become an intuitive potter, a potter who completely understands what they're doing and how to hold their hand. It takes a little bit of time, a little bit of practice, and sometimes you can do these hand positions without using clay, just to practice, just to reinforce them in your mind. Initially, what I'm going to do is also throw a piece um, without centering it properly just to show you the results and the reason why it's really important to center. Once again, thank you very much for uh, tuning in. If you do enjoy what we have here today, please give us a like and subscribe. It really does help. Thank you. I imagine when you first thought of doing pottery on the wheel, it, you thought it would be a relaxing and calm experience. Well, I'm about to show you, uh, this is probably how it originally starts, where your piece is off center uh, you'll find one area of your rim is a bit thicker than the other. Things will be going a bit too fast because you don't have much control of the pedal. Um, and when you try and pull your piece up, it will be a little bit irregular. The rings will not be nice and even like they should be. And at this point, because of the speed, you're probably not breathing. So you're probably thinking to yourself, what the hell am I doing here? Well. What we're going to do is we're going to bring it back and calm the whole situation down and look at where your hand should be and make your pottery a nice, relaxed experience, like it should be. So your first step here is coning. Make sure you've got lots of water, putting a bit of downward pressure initially. Think of this as a teepee, and you're forcing down those temp pegs at the beginning, and then squeezing your hands up together as you ride up the form to create that conical shape. Once you have that form, you're going to wrap your, in my case, left hand around the piece, grab hold of your thumb, and push downwards with your right hand, almost like you're hitting it with a karate chop. Have it at about a 45 degree angle. And let's check it out without any clay involved. So hands wrapped around fingers on the outside, really important. And we're chopping downwards. And both these two acts, these are the two acts that are going to carry us through the centering process. What, they're going to, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be hunting around for any areas that are a little bit off center. So it might be down the bottom, we have to push it back up again. And any areas of imperfection, it might even be right down the bottom. We might have to tuck our little finger in around, straighten it up. And notice as we're doing this, nice and calm. We're breathing, we're easy, it's all cool. We're slowly getting it centered and everything's nice and relaxed. And we're gonna slowly release our hands and get ready for that vital opening up position. Once you've centered, give yourself a little mark across the top of your piece, and then we're going to begin the process of opening up and have, um, in my case, my left hand cupped around the pot with my two fingers on the inside Almost think of this as your uh, two fingers on the inside behaving like an excavator, going straight down to the base and then moving along the base towards your fingers on the outside. Thumb locked in, making sure you're supporting the piece. 
If you don't have the fingers and the thumb kind of locking in and making sure that uh, things are not going off center, it will go off center. So they have to put on a little bit of pressure to make sure that you're maintaining center. So if you did this one-handed, uh, your piece will tend to go out of shape. Also, once again, make sure that you're compressing that rim. Oh, collaring in. What a wonderful step this is. This is to make sure that you're getting maximum height out of your piece. So you'll end up gaining in height once you collar in. So you're gonna have um, your thumbs at around about six o'clock and your knuckles around about 11 and one o'clock and move them up the form. So bring them up together to collar that in and bring a much higher profile form. And that's gonna give you a nice platform to start your uh, pulling up process. And I want you to envisage that you uh, have a, almost a finger puppet of a dog in terms of fin uh, opening up. So the top of the dog's mouth is going to go on the inside of the form. The thumb and the uh, finger on my right hand are on the outside. Once again, left hand is the other way around. And we almost, we're almost like a plet. Think of them as a pair of calipers or pliers going straight from the bottom and we're going to pull up and obviously once we get to the top we compress the rim so straight down the bottom even um, pull all the way through look at the throwing rings they're fairly consistent we don't want big gaps between those throwing rings we want it to be nice and regular yet again press that rim use that sponge to keep it nice and controlled across the top back down at this stage, it's probably about our third pull here. We're gonna ease back the speed a little bit once we get to around about this point. And that should almost become a subtle approach that you don't even notice yourself doing. I reckon you should practice these hand actions all the time, at work, on a train, on a plane, anywhere. And if anyone even asks you, just say, hey, I'm practicing my invisible clay action. Thank you so much for joining us. If you enjoyed our video, please give us a like and subscribe. It really does help. And if you would like to see more of our videos, check this one out over here. And if you like what you see around here in the background, check out our website. And we look forward to seeing you in our next video. Thank you.